Elliot Rossing and I'm here with the Eck family today and the Eck family is one of two farm families that are being recognized at the 2014 Queen Anne's County Fair as uh, members of the or Farmer of the Year Award and the immediate family members are here with me everybody is here actually even one that is not normally here in the Queen Anne's County so we're gonna start this conversation with Mark welcome yes. thank you <laughs> um, Mark is also the chairman of the park board and uh, he plays an important role in the park operation and management so we thank you for that initiative and uh, for all your support with the chicken festival that we had recently so your operation is really generational now um, can you tell us a little bit about your background and how many years you've been farming um, I was raised on a dairy farm uh, with my father and uncle and uh, I got in the chicken business while I was in high school and built one chicken house in 1977 that held 20,000 growers and uh, after Vicki and I got married uh, we expanded that operation to two more houses in 86 and then we were fortunate to be able to uh, buy the property we're on now in 1990 and expand that to four more houses so now we have seven houses on two locations mm -hmm. And um, so this is um, 37 years I've been raising chickens on my own. Wow, 37 years. Yes. And how many acres do you till or own or rent or whatever the combination uh, is? What's the max, what's the combination? Well, we've been, we've been very blessed over the years. Um, we've um, been fortunate enough to buy land, our first farm here, like I said, in 1990. Mm -hmm. And then we were able to buy uh, two more farms in Caroline County after that. And uh, and then since then we've been in 2000, uh, we were able to buy some farms here in uh, Queen Anne's County. And then we bought our last farm in, um, I think it was 2010. Uh, so now we've got a little over 1,500 acres total. Mm -hmm. And we um, tilled about 1,200 acres, which is corn, wheat, I barley, soybeans. Yeah. Um, and um, with the rest of it's either in woodland or pasture. Um, and CREP ground and um, we've been been very successful we, we want to thank the good Lord you were recognized in 2014 by DPI as one of their outstanding poultry producers of one of 13 yes correct um, so how many houses chicken houses again do you have remind me we have uh, seven total on two locations. Okay, and how and many birds does that equate to? They each hold approximately, depending on uh, density for summer or winter, mm -hmm. around 27,000. The first one I built only held 20. Mm -hmm. So that gives us roughly somewhere around 180,000 capacity at one time. Right. We've and we turn them over four to four and a half times a year. Okay. So you've seen a lot of changes over the many years that you've been farming. What would you say has been the most significant change that's impacted your farming operation? The most significant change in the uh, farming operation and everything, I want to say, not just chickens, but also in field crops, is uh, technology. Um, the biggest change in the, in the um, chicken industry would be controllers that run off of, uh, run the chicken houses, their environment with the fans, and also with uh, the ventilation and uh, has lighting programs, can run your feeders and stuff like that with the controller. You have alarms built in with that, so you can stay on top of that very easily. Uh, with, the, with the equipment, the new modern equipment with, with um, the auto steers, mm -hmm. with the mappings, uh, also uh, with the sprayers to turn the booms on and off as, so you don't have overlap. The auto steer makes it so you're not skipping or overlapping. Uh, then the other biggest change in the grain production is um, the technology in the seed business. The hybrids that we're growing today uh, have uh, very good potential for higher yields, and also with the technology of your Roundup Ready in the in the genes that make it a whole lot um, easier to keep the weeds out, and that that also relates to having you know higher higher yields, which in the long and at the end gives you um, more profitability. Well, very good. So share with me, what's your favorite memory or what are you most proud of uh, from all your years in agriculture? I would say um, being able to work with the family. Family farm, family operation, 
all the way back, you know, with my parents, uh, my uh, my uncle, and um, and with my kids today as well. Right. Well, that's good. And it's a very emotional time for everybody, so we get that totally. <laughs> I'm glad that I'm not crying yet because that's a possibility. But let's go on to Vicky now. Vicky, how did you and Mark meet? We went to church together and school together. Mm -hmm. Queen Anne's County High. Yes. And St. Paul's in Ingleside. In Ingleside. Okay. So it takes a lot of diverse talent to keep any operation functioning efficiently. And you work off the farm, is that correct? Yes. I work okay. for Eastern Shore Title, and I do um, work with real estate settlements and doing title work. Okay. And you enjoy that? Yes, very much. Right. But you're also a part of this operation, the farming operation. What is your primary responsibility here? I mainly do payroll and the kids since they just got out of school, but I used to run them to soccer and lacrosse and 4-H mm -hmm. and FFA and do what I could to help with that. Right. Takes a lot to keep everything going. Alan, you are the eldest son of Mark and Vicki and an integral part of the Mayview farming operation. Yes. So you graduated from Queen Anne's County High School also? Yes. In 2010? Yes. And there's this whole laundry list of awards that you've received, so help me out if I don't get all of them or in the right order. You received your state FFA degree and was named Star Farmer for uh, the state, right? Yes. And that was primarily for your straw operation that you started? Yes, my straw and my market hogs. Okay, so that's even a diversification from the poultry and the grain that's normally a part of the, the basic yes, operation. Yes, Good. And then you won the State Farmer, State Star Farmer Award? Yes. Right? And then you were also recognized as a national finalist for the poultry production? Yes, a proficiency through FFA. Right. And then your American FFA degree? Yes. Okay. Have you ever thought of doing anything other than farm? No, no, really. <laughs> Um, what's your favorite part of the operation? Because you've obviously taken it a step further with diversification through the things we just talked about. Just being able to do what I like and have fun doing it. So what are your future plans? How do you see yourself as a part of the operation or do you see yourself more independently? Um, I'm going to college at Dell State right now working towards my bachelor's degree and I also working in the farm I'm planning on expanding in my own with my chickens and my, my hogs and my straw business as well. Good. Did you say hogs? Yes. Easton. Uh, Easton is Alan's son. Can you tell me how many hogs you have? How many pigs do you have? 32. How many? 32. 32? Wow, that's a lot. Do you like the pigs? You do? Good. I'm glad. Kenny, you're the one that we're glad is home from South Carolina. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Why are you home this weekend? I'm home this weekend for my sister's graduation party from high school. Very good. So what are you doing down in South Carolina? I'm a junior at Winthrop University studying exercise science and focus in pre-physical therapy. <laughs> and then hopefully after I graduate that, come in two years, I go down to uh, a graduate school. Okay. So you're also in a fraternity? Yes, I'm in the Kappa Sigma fraternity. And is that a special, does it have a specialized focus or is it just one of- We do a lot of philanthropy stuff helping uh, military heroes, um, also helping out with like multiple sclerosis disease. Uh, we just got a bunch of awards for uh, having the most community service hours with over 23,000. Uh, Very good. Mm -hmm. So do you think that your life here on the farm and the background and that you have from this environment has helped you, you know, focus on those philanthropic things? It's helped me out a lot being able to organize and get stuff done around my house that I have down there and uh, being a landlord and everything. It also helps me through school just to push to get through everything I need to get done. Very I need to good. get done. Very good. Well, we're glad you're here. And since you mentioned Janelle's graduation, um, I think the tradition of the blue jacket continues with you. Does it not? Yes. Would you like to share with us what your most recent honor was? On June 26, I was elected as the Maryland State FFA State President, and that's just a year-round service that I have for the FFA mm -hmm. and I'll be holding conferences and workshops and just being a leader for the FFA organization. Mm -hmm. So while you're doing that, are you attending school here as well? I'm gonna attend just be yeah. college part-time and take two classes. Mm -hmm. Very good. So I saw recently that you attended a leadership conference for the the FFA officers for the state um, and that you were asking a lot of tough questions about the future of ag. Yes, um, we talked a lot about ag issues that our country had 
and one was more on the western shore. They had it worse than we have it here, but just the ag teacher shortage, and they just are trying to encourage more students to go to college for ag education. So what do you think your goals are as the FFA president for this coming year? For this coming year, um, I'd say my goals are just to influence members to be more engaged in the organization and to find a career choice that they enjoy through the organization because we're known for our personal growth, premier leadership, and career success. Very good. Okay, so anybody, um, what's your biggest concern about the future for agriculture here in Maryland? Well, we can say here in Maryland. Development is, is, is really putting pressure on production agriculture. Uh, the zoning has changed that uh, you got to build on, on some of the best ground that we have because of the um, sewage um, or your, 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 um, your um, septic. septic system. Mm -hmm. and the requirements for that and to do that you got to be on good quality ground to do that so that's you know putting the pressure on uh, losing good quality ground to develop now uh, I'm not saying I don't want to see development development's good for any uh, community uh, in many different ways um, but it would be better if the development was kind of structured more locally to the towns that we already have so they have the infrastructure that's already in place instead of just putting houses out in the middle of cornfields. Which is consistent with the smart growth principle. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay, so individually or collectively, what would your wish be for future generations of your family to be involved in agriculture? I think um, Alan's already seeing the future with the, by attending the New Century Farmer and uh, continuing college. He, he's going to bring the future to us through genetics and more, more of the classes he's taking, he's going to help us see what differences we can do to make it more diversified and more cost effective. Well, Mark, Vicki, Alan, Kenny, and Janelle, thank you so much for allowing me to be here and join you uh, as we celebrate this. As you know, this will be, uh, or you may not know, this will be televised on QAC TV 7. It'll also be available on the web. And then I'm sure you'll join us Wednesday, August 13th of the fair, and you'll be presented with um, the recognition that night at 645 at the main show ring. So, uh, and the other family will be joining us there also, and there'll be state elected officials there that will also offer their uh, recognition and thanks for all that you do for Queen Anne's County and for the agriculture. We're honored. Thank well, you. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you.